Delta is the most loved of the three large international American carriers, the other two being American Airlines and United. This is my first time reviewing Delta One, and to be honest, the experience made me sad for the state of US aviation. Here's what it's like flying the best US airline in their long haul business class. Welcome to my first flight analysis video, Nonstop Nation. This is my upgraded form of flight reviews going far more in depth than before. Today's flight will take us from New York JFK to Bogota, Colombia. The flight is about the length of a transcontinental flight from New York to Los Angeles, taking around five and a half hours. Delta is one of the best deals on business class in the world on this route. I'll tell you all about how I paid, how much I paid, and how you can book it after I show you the flight experience. As always, all my tickets are paid entirely by me. My flight was operated by Delta's Boeing 767-300, most of which are 20 to 30 years old, which usually isn't a problem for Delta since they love giving facelifts to old aircraft, but apparently not so much with these ones. They have 34 767-300s, making it their main wide-body airplane, and it's the backbone of their JFK long-haul fleet. Now, some may say this is not a fair look at Delta's current business class product. After all, they have Delta One suites on some planes. I disagree. This is not only a good look into their cabin maintenance, which will be the same on other aircraft types as well, but also into the soft product like food and service. Delta is planning to keep this aircraft in their fleet for at least another four years, so millions of passengers will potentially be flying these in the meantime. My flight was departing just before 1pm, like one minute before 1pm. Why do US airlines have such weird departure times? I don't know but I could find out and answer it in a different video. The flight was leaving from Delta's hub at New York JFK, one of three large airports in the New York area. On this day, I decided to take an Uber since I had a 20% off coupon, so my trip ended up costing $65 from Manhattan. Normally, I take public transport though, which is by far the most reliable way of getting to JFK, especially during rush hour. You can either take the Long Island Railroad from Penn Station at 34th Street, or the subway from wherever you can catch the A train. Both options will cost around $10 all the way and connect at Jamaica Station in Queens. Once you get to Jamaica, you connect to the air train to JFK, which stops at all terminals and leaves frequently. The best part is the beautiful tarmac views you get of the airport, I don't have any good footage of it, but trust me. So JFK has some of the nicest and some of the worst terminals in the US. Luckily, Delta flights depart from Terminal 4 at the moment, which is excellent by US standards. Time to fly, let's go. I have new transition shades that I'm trying out, and it's very weird when they're suddenly dark and you're indoors. <laughs> Delta has a nice premium check-in facility, but keep in mind that most global airlines with separate check-in facilities for premium passengers go much further with design and comfort. Nonetheless, this isn't bad for JFK. The lady checking me in was a quintessential New Yorker, which is a perfect way to say goodbye to my second home, but I'll let you guess how the service was. Once through security, I took a quick stop at the Delta Sky Club to print some documents. This lounge is huge, and I like the atmosphere. Ironically, all the staff were Spanish speaking, so I felt like I was already in Colombia, and the snack bar employees enthusiastically told me about the healthy food options. Oh, stressful. I printed something in the lounge, which was actually quite easy. Once you figured out how to use the printer, now heading to the gate to fly this Delta 767 and Delta 1 straight south down to Bogota. Now, welcome on board Delta 767-300. I'm learning animation and this is my first project. I drew the airplane and the seats from scratch. What do you think? First things first, the 767 is unique in many ways. What makes this aircraft so nice in economy class is what makes it so bad in business class, namely the width of the cabin. In economy, you have a comfortable 232 configuration, my favorite in the skies, but in business, it's difficult to squeeze the seats in. I chose 5A, which you should avoid like your life depends on it. You'll see why shortly. 
Instead, try to choose one of the other odd-numbered window seats since they are closest to the window, offering the most privacy. When I got to my seat, I saw this. It turns out that both 5A and 6A are used for crew rests on longer flights. Since this wasn't a very long flight, they let passengers select these seats. So usually, the crew would close this curtain to get complete privacy and good rest. But it's not the most hygienic looking curtain to have in your space, right? Hi, Vincero, what's up? Oh, you want to sponsor a video? What's the occasion? 15% off everything? When does the sale end? February 14th? That's tomorrow, so my viewers only have two days to get their stuff. I have to tell you while I have you on the line, I really love my Vincero watches, especially my new Chrono S Gold Reserve. The quality is just unmatched at this price. Wait, I have a five year warranty on this watch and all watches I buy from Vincero and a 365 day return policy? Okay, I'll tell my viewers in non -sub Nation that you have several new colors, designs, and even blue light blocking glasses now. Sure, they can go to vincerowatches.com slash non sale to shop Vincero's Valentine's Day sale with free shipping now. The link will be at the top of the description. Thanks so much, guys. Other than the curtain, the cabin looked okay from a distance. I like the finishes on Delta's seats, but you'll want to avoid looking at them up close, because the wear and tear is evident. These seats are more overused than the title, Flying Emirates $20,000 First Class. The seat also moved back and forth when I moved. Weird. During these times especially, you want the seats to look sparkly clean, which you'd expect on the world's most profitable airline. Now, enjoy these views of the dirty seat before you enjoy the beautiful exterior views as we take off from JFK. After takeoff, the crew came around with a tray of amenity kits in purple, grey, and black. I chose the kit in purple, which was well stocked. I really love the mouthwash and hand sanitizer. A large toothpaste is also handy for short trips, but it's kinda weird to have such a small toothbrush accompany it. Overall, this is still one of the better business class amenity kits out there. I'll be selling Oscar's grey unopened kit on my website if you want one. All the profits go to a coral reef farming charity but there's only one kit available, the link will be in the description. Now, who's hungry? I was famished when boarding this flight, so I was excited to eat. Luckily, the meal service was in full swing just 20 minutes after takeoff with all dishes being served on a single tray. There was no menu, but the regular options I overheard were either a turkey or caprese sandwich with potato chips. I thought it was strange to have a sandwich as the main course on a flight scheduled at 6 hours. Surely COVID can't be an excuse to serve a sandwich if they're serving a meal anyway. My vegan meal was a grilled tofu sandwich without the potato chips. The bread was soggy and unfortunately disgusting. It literally makes me nauseous thinking about it, just no. An important part of any long haul flight is the in-flight entertainment. On Delta 767, the video screen is tiny but impressively high quality. The system is easy to navigate with the remote, not so much with your hands. The selection was also quite good and I especially liked that they had several episodes of many of the classiest TV shows. It always confuses me when airlines just take one random episode from the fifth season of a show and call it a day. As a fan of the fine arts, I was thrilled to see they had five episodes of Bob's Burgers, which kept me entertained. The accompanying headphones, which were handed out during boarding, were comfortable and high quality. Then, it was time to work, which meant it would be time for a nap 5 minutes later, and sure enough, I was ready to take a nap at 3pm New York time. Now I'd been warned about the foot area being tiny on Delta 767s, but I didn't expect it to be this small. 
Basically, don't expect very comfortable sleep unless you're under 12 years old. I managed to find one decent position on my side, but then I couldn't really move at all. I was so confused because Austrian Airlines has a seemingly identical configuration, but I just found their seats so much more spacious. On a positive note, Delta has individual air vents so you can control the temperature. Now for the last part, the service. This is where Delta is supposed to distinguish themselves most from American and United. In my experience, bad service is highly unusual on Delta. However, remarkable and memorable service is unusual as well. The crew would respond to the call button by coming over and saying, hi there, which made me giggle. One major cabin crew hack if you want to reduce the amount of service you have to do is to turn off all the cabin lights and crank up the heat to make the passengers pass out. Try to notice if the crew does that on your next flight because it's almost guaranteed on US airlines. Shortly after my nap, we started our approach into Bogota. On arrival, Oscar and I decided to take an Uber, which is technically illegal in Colombia, but I preferred being able to pay with credit card and have a streamlined receipt with Uber, and it worked well, taking us to our Airbnb in Chapinero for just under $14. So by far the most common question I get is how I pay for all my business class tickets. And the truth is I usually use miles unless I find a great fare like this. Right now you can fly one way from New York to Bogota for under $200 in business class and dates are available all the way until August. Or if you choose to fly round trip, it's $460 round trip in live flat business class all the way into September, which is truly such an incredible deal. And I know you might be saying, Dan, the flight didn't look so amazing for business class, but at this price, I mean, these are economy prices. Overall, the value for money was just fantastic. What would I say about Delta One in other cases though, where the price perhaps isn't as fantastic? Well, as you saw, the experience was rather underwhelming. This is not what I would call a leading business class product in any sense of the word. And I think this did give me a good taste of what to expect on other Delta One flights. So overall, I certainly won't be seeking out Delta One anytime soon. But you know what you should seek out? that subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching guys. I love you. appreciate the support as always. And until I see you all for the next video, fly safe.